So good morning, Stackers. Uh, first, uh, uh, thanks for uh, attending this working session, and thanks for your time. Um, before this presentation, uh, just a few minutes to give a brief description about me and the background of this cloud. Today, I'm going to bring you a wonderful story about the best practice to build a, a private cloud platform which is based on OpenStack. So for me, my name is Charles, and I'm from H3C and you know, working as a product manager. So H3C is a Chinese ID company which can provide the customer hardware, software, and a total solution. So for the hardware, we can provide the customer the physical device, uh, physical, sorry, physical server, uh, storage devices, and the network devices, and the security devices. And for the software, we can provide the customer the visualization platform, the SDN controller, cloud platform, and the big data platform. So in conclusion, we, what we provide the customer is that we are not a public pro, uh, cloud provider. What we do is just to help the customer to build their uh, own private cloud center by providing our product and the consultant service and the total solution. So this cloud I'm going to share you today is uh, that we built with uh, our customer together. So. Uh, we have 40 minutes for this break session. And if you guys have, uh, my speech will go about 30 minutes and we will try to uh, make a 10 or uh, five or 10 minutes for the Q&A. So if you guys have any questions, just jot them down first and we'll leave them to the Q&A stage. Okay. Uh, just, I just slide shows what I'm going to try to uh, share with you today can be separated into four different parts. The first, I, I will give a brief description about the company, and the second, I will just tell the story behind this, you know, this cloud. It's about why the customer uh, want to build this cloud, what's the problem they faced with the existing uh, data center. So the third is that I want to share with you about the technical point this we encountered when building this cloud platform. The last. You know, uh, this uh, it's a big, it's a huge, huge cloud data center. So we just want to offer you some tips for optimize. Okay, first, uh, China Offshore Oil Group. It is one of the three largest oil group in China. I mean, oil company, and it was founded in 1982. And uh, after it's founded, you know, within a few past 30 years, it has advanced it. Uh, a global business across Asia, uh, Europe, uh, Australia, and Africa, and now it has over ten, uh, sorry, uh, it has over one hundred uh, uh, sorry, uh, ten thousand staff. So and this has a total one thousand one hundred sixty-two billion RMB assets in total, and now uh, also they are the top five hundred uh, in a uh, global. So I, can't, I just cannot uh, remember exactly what, what rank it is. Uh, maybe, maybe in 2016, it ranks 109. So what the business they have? You know, it's an oil group. So their main business is to, you know, the oil extraction. That they will build the production site on the seat and will build in the drilling wall to extract the, the crude oil and uh, turn them into process and turn them into the secondary energy, such as gasoline, uh, diesel, and jet fuel, and some other chemical materials. And they also built you know, the gas station across the country, and they also provide the, you know, the filling service. So besides the oil and the, the secondary energy product, they also uh, provide the uh, Fact, uh, the industry equipment, such as you know the air compressor and uh, the power generator, and they also uh, provide the financial services. So uh, China Offshore Company is a listed company, and they also provide the financial services, such as the stock service, the the, the trust and the funding services. And uh, right now they have over. 30 large data centers across China. You know, China is a big country and they have their cloud data centers in the northern, eastern, and southern part of the China. And now uh, they have running about 600 coal plants 
on the on their uh, cloud data centers. Uh, sorry, it's not cloud data centers. I mean existing cloud uh, existing data centers. Uh, so I have read uh, the core applications. There are about six hundred and too many. So since the time is limited today, I just cannot uh, tell you the applications step by step. And besides, I don't have that uh, strong memory, right? So, but we can sort these applications into different categories. So they are, you know, the production services, the customer relationship management services, the, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the financial uh, system and uh, you know, the office work for the staff. So that's they use this data center to support their business. But uh, right now, the, the problem they faced is that you know there are too many data centers, and each data center has their own devices. They, 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 recruit, they recruit a lot of staff for different data centers, and the equipment in these data centers are from different vendors. So it's very hard for them to operate and to manage, and they need a unified way to manage these uh, data centers. So just as after a considerable consideration, and they have made a final decision to big, build a super large cloud in their data center. I mean, the data center, the newly built cloud data center, first they will be built on the open stack, and what, we have the question is that what the cloud will be used for? So just as I said, just as I said before, that the data center, the, their existing data center are used for provide, uh, provide the resource for their existing appliance. That means that each data center are used for different departments. You know the Chinese offshore company has a lot of subsidiary and has a lot of departments. And each department and a subsidiary own their, uh, their, has their own cloud, uh, uh, has their own data center. So this newly built cloud platform will provide a service for different departments and the subsidiary. So that means if the staff from this department or from this subsidiary near the, near the new resource, they don't need to build their own data center, just uh, use the web portal and uh, apply for their own cloud resources. So next is that how many data centers will be built? Sorry, I, I just cannot tell you the how many data centers will be built, but these data centers will be built in China, in Singapore, Dubai, and some other parts of the world. And how large the scale is? You know, uh, for the scale, there are a lot of ways to measure scale, you know, how many CPU you have, how many disk group, how many data you will store, and how many workloads you, you're going to host. So what I'm here trying to talk about is that it's a scale way, what we're going to be in failure, year, built in failure, years, that the, the physical CPU number will exceed about 60,000. Think about it, 60,000 physical CPU. So there will be a lot of data centers across the world. And the, the most important thing is that what kind of services they will pro provide. So the cloud is gonna provide a lot of services for the end user. First, the, you know, the ICE, I mean the infrastructure service that the end user can apply for their uh, virtual machine and the virtual disk, virtual network, and uh, the, such as and the database, and they can also Pro, uh, provide the service, I mean the past service that the, for the developer. The developer can upload their uh, code to this cloud platform and the, the cloud platform will orchestrate all the workflow for them. And also, they will provide the SaaS service such as, you know, uh, the CRM service and the financial service and the, the uh, end user doesn't need to build their own applications and just uh, log into the portal and can share the business, uh, sorry, share the application. So, how the service will be created? It's uh, just like uh, you know the public uh, cloud data center, but we call it a private cloud data center because it only provides the service for their own staff. It will not provide the service for you know the people from outside. It only provides the resource for its own staff. And the same is that administrator will prepare everything, such as the image, the uh, software package, the script and anything else 
and then the, the tenant user, I mean the end user, just uh, finish a single click and they can share the resource. So that's how the service to be created. Okay, so we just talk about uh, what will be look like, I mean, in one data center. So we, we have already built the cloud data center with the customer. And uh, since there is a lot of equipment in the data center, so we separated these equipment in different rack. You know, we have the specified specify the rack for the management, for the NFE components, computer resource, and network security device, and sense storage. So for the management rack, we will have the cloud platform, a steam controller, the virtualization management platform, and some other uh, management platform, I mean for the, uh, the whole environment will be installed on the management rack. It's not one rack, it's a lot of rack. You know, since the cloud platform will deploy it on lots of physical servers, so we will distribute these physical servers in different rack for, to guarantee the high availability. And for the NFA components, it's, you know, you, have, you must have heard about the NFA, it's a virtual machine which has the networking operat operating system installed that can provide the customer network uh, services such as the firewall, the load balancer, and uh, some, some other services such as antivirus. But the difference between it and the traditional network devices is that it was installed on the virtual machine, it's not uh, equipment. It it's has the operating system installed on the virtual machine, and the virtual machine will provide the network devices for the end user. So the third rack we have is the computer resource. For the uh, computer resource, we have different types. We will install, you know, the visualization platform. We will install the, uh, the uh, visualization platform, I mean, from different vendors, such as the vSphere, uh, the CAS, uh, sorry, the KVM, the, the, the Zen, and the HyperWay uh, visualization platform installed on the host. We will also have the bare, bare metal server on it. You know, some, uh, some uh, applications such as uh, Oracle database is not, uh, it's not a uh, proper, uh, sorry, it's not, you, it's not a, a good way to install it on the uh, virtual machine, so we should install the database on the, on the uh, physical server. And also we will have, uh, have the Docker and some other container uh, system installed on the computer resources, uh, the computer rack. And uh, for, the, for the network and the security device, is that we will have the core switch the router and the uh, firewall and uh, the load balancer put on this rack. You know, what's the difference between this and the NFA components is that the NFA is on the virtual machine, but they are actually physical devices. And they provide the traffic for north and south traffic. And the NFA components usually, uh, usually use for to provide the traffic for the west and the east traffic. So the sand storage is at a traditional sand storage which provides, you know, SCSI, FC, and the, the file service for the computer resources. Always, also, we will build a distributed uh, storage which based on Ceph on the computer resource. So today, that's the reason why we are here today because, you know, this cloud platform is based on OpenStack. So we adopt the uh, open community, open stack, but we add a lot of features on it, such as, you know, the, to make it more uh, reliable, to make the, to improve the uh, ability for the management. And uh, as we can see from this page, that all, all the open stack service, such as Nova, Cinder, Neutron, other components are dockerized. I mean, they are containerized. They will deploy on the Docker engine and the, we will use uh, the Kubernetes to, you know, to schedule these OpenStack resources. And we, besides OpenStack service, we also have uh, some other services such as the database, middleware, and the GUI. I mean, these components are all uh, containerized. Yeah, you know, all these part, all these components are put on the Docker engine and use the Kubernetes to schedule them. And this is, a, this is the kernel layer. And for the upper layer, that we call it the system layer. 
what the system layer means that uh, you know this will be a cloud platform so it should be easy for the administrator and the end user to use it so we add a lot of you know the other uh, the other services that the open so the open stack I mean the community version cannot provide so we add a lot of other features such as you know the charging uh, services uh, the multi-tenant and the, you know the approval policy and the, some other such as uh, uh, the business logical process we, all, we add a lot of other features on, on this layer and the, on the third layer is the service layer that, that is for the uh, for the end user it means that the end user can just type the uh, IP address they need and log in with their user and password and they can see the all the services listed on the catalog and just with a single click they can use the, the resources such as you know the virtual machine and the storage network database and power service and so on so next what I'm going to talk with you is about uh, uh, the main part of this switch is about uh, some technical uh, points that we encountered when, when building this cloud platform with a customer. So first is uh, integration with virtualization platform. You know, before we built this cloud platform, we talked with our customer and they tell us that they will purchase a lot of new virtualization platform, but, but they also has a lot of legacy resources. You know, they have already created a lot of virtual machine on their existing uh, VSphere platform, but they will also purchase a lot of new virtualization platform, which based on the KVM or Hyper-V or some other provider. So we need to find a way to, you know, use OpenStack to integrate all these virtualization platform together. So what we do is that we will develop a lot of you know, the driver, the NOAA driver, Cinder driver, and, and uh, the Neutron plugin to integrate it with the virtualization platform. Here we have an example that we uh, take the VisFire and the, the, the CASA system, which is you know, provided by our company. It was a visualization platform, which, which is based on the KVM, um, for example. So the cloud platform is OpenStack. So we have the NOAA driver, Cinder driver, and the Neutron driver developed to integrate it with the Waste Center and the CVK, which is the management platform for the, for the virtualization platform. So after the integration, if you apply for a cloud host, it will be a virtual machine on the ESX or on the KVM host. And if you want to you know, apply for a virtual disk, it will be, oh, sorry, if you want to apply for block storage from the cloud platform, it will be uh, actually a virtual disk on backend storage of the local drive. And if you want to apply for an internal network or you create a VPC network, and actually it will, you know, the cloud, cloud platform will cut API or the, the management platform. The management platform will create a lot of part group on the virtual switch across the the waste wire and the, the CAS system. So this is uh, how we integrate with the virtualization platform. For the open source KVM, we, you know, for the K, uh, open source KVM, we don't have the central management platform. So the OpenStack will we, we'll use the Nova driver directly to talk to the, the KVM host. But for, for the solution this time, uh, the virtualization platform have their own central, plat, uh, central management platform. So the OpenStack will uh, directly cause API or vCenter or the KVM and the, the KVM and the vCenter, uh, sorry, the CVK and the vCenter will uh, schedule the results across the host of the cluster. So how to integrate with bare metal server? So the bare metal server is a bit different from, you know, from the visualization platform. So in this cloud platform, we, we don't only support virtual machine, but we also have lots of physical server installed. You know, a lot of, a lot of services such as uh, the database or the OLAP system, which is, uh, you know, requires a lot of the basic resource. So it's, uh, it's not suitable to put them in the, on the virtual machine. So the best way is to install them on the traditional physical servers. But there must be a way to schedule 
uh, the resources together. You know what I mean is that uh, if I'm an end user, I want to use the results. It, it shows me only virtual machine, but if I want, uh, I need a result from the physical server. I just uh, click the, the button that I need a physical server. So you don't care about what you know what the result behind is. The cloud platform just pro provide an easy way for the end user, and the, us the end user can share the results. So leave all the task to the cloud platform, and we uh, take advantage of the Ironix driver. So the Ironic driver, we can, you know, call the IPMI protocol to talk to the BMC on the physical server. And we can, such as the, the server of some other system from HP or from other uh, vendors, they didn't use a general protocol. They have their private protocol. So we cooperate with these companies and we de develop the driver to make it possible for the customer has a lot of choice for different physical server and to avoid the vendor lock-in. So in this case, a cloud host is actually a physical server. And uh, the, the block storage is actually a logic line from the backend storage or a local drive on the physical server. And the VPC network, you know, if we use a bare metal server, there will not be virtual switch. The bare metal server we will use is fit connect, connect to the uh, switch directly. So the cloud platform should have this ability to directly uh, connect with the physical switch and send the confer, uh, conf configuration files to this switch, such as uh, create a VLAN port and create a policy on the physical switch. And next, we're going to talk about the SDN, uh, SDN solution. So this is a, it's a very big cloud. You know, uh, in the past, if we want to isolate uh, the network from different tenant users, I mean, uh, if I'm tenant A and his tenant B, and they want their, you know, want their network uh, isolated, so they need to find a way to isolate this network. And in the past, the VLAN is the best solution. But think about this. If the scale of your cloud platform expands quickly, so you need to find a way to extend the VLAN isolation. You know the number of the VLAN is only 4,096. So we need to find a way to extend the, uh, the number of the network, I mean the logic number. So in here, we adopt VXLAN. Yeah, actually, we have GRE and some other, uh, some other ways to expand the network, but here we use VXLAN. So uh, the cloud platform will, you know, will, we, developed the, we developed the Neutron plugin to talk with the SDN controller, and the SDN controller can talk with the virtual switch or the physical switch through the open flow protocol. And for example, if the VM in the same host, if they want to communicate with, with each other, you know, the packet or the, the network packet don't need to be encapsulated. But if you, the traffic from the VM on the host, if I want to talk with the VM on the host too, you know, the traffic should be encapsulated into the VXLAN packet. So we have two ways to uh, encapsulate the packet. The first is on the virtual switch, and another way is on the physical switch. And we support uh, the hybrid. We, you know, since we have a lot of physical server connected to the switch, so we need to find a hybrid way to connect them together. So you just uh, create a vague XLAN network, and the SDN controller will control all the flow table through the open flow uh, protocol. So that is a layer two network. So how about the layer three, layer four, and layer seven? I mean, advanced networks such as the, uh, the virtual load balancer, virtual firewall, and some other uh, advanced net network functions. So here we, we got two ways. The first, we can use them, just as I said before, we can use the traditional security devices. We can also use the NFV components. If we, if we use the traditional devices, you know, the SDN controller will talk with the device through the netconf protocol. 
And the, if we use a NFV components, and the, the string controller will create a virtual machine instead. So it will be a service chain, you know. If you need a layer two network, and if you need an advanced network, you just uh, uh, open the web portal or fill in, your, fill in the parameter you preferred. And uh, the SDN controller and OpenStack will orchestrate all, everything. So it's a service chain. You know, the, the SDN controller and the OpenStack platform will create a virtual machine and connect the, the NFO components of the virtual firewall, virtual balance together, and the user can use the service. Oh, this doesn't work. So the next is the application catalog and the DB service. So for the application catalog, what we mean is that you know some uh, in the past, we talk, when we talk about the cloud platform, it uh, generally means that uh, the cloud platform can provide a virtual machine for the, for the end user. But now the, the tenant user wants to use the resource in a more easier way, you know. If they, if they need a, a application, it doesn't need for them to create a virtual machine first and then install the application on it. What they do is just, uh, I, need, I need the database, I need the middleware. So what I should do is just a single click and the, the platform should take, take, uh, take care of everything. So here we didn't use a project from the OpenStack. Instead, we, you know, integrate some third orchestration tools such as the source stack and Puppet, and together with OpenStack, and because it can provide more functions for the customer. So what we do is that we can pro create a lot of private, you know, the labor library, and we can upload the uh, script and the template information onto the uh, uh, pri uh, private library, and we can also import the uh, application package on the library. You know, uh, for the Chinese offshore company, uh, the system they use is not the, the general one, such as, uh, you know, the uh, MariaDB and the Mexico, it's not it. They use a lot of application from the, I, the third ISV. So we need to find a way to help them to finish the task for the application orchestration. I mean the application deployed in an automatic way. So the customer should you know, write the script and the provider template first and import them to the uh, private library. And they can drag all these things together in a visualized way and publish them in the catalog. And the, the, net, uh, the tenant user can log into the portal and they can see the service that's uh, the enemy, uh, the, the administrator provide for them, and they can click to create a application, and uh, you know the cloud platform will combine the script and the template together, and to deploy it, the, the application system on the virtual machine or on the uh, physical server. And in the near near future, we will you know put bring in the Docker engine. So that means. Next time when we talk about the application catalog, there should, there should be another way is that use the Docker to work with the traditional one. So also for the database, it can be also created in such way. So what I'm talking about just moments ago is that we can orchestrate the deployment of the application. But we can also orchestrate the workflow of the, uh, you know, the deployment of the database. So since we adopt this way, that any application, any database can be installed on this platform because we have an engine to orchestrate this workflow. So since it is a large cloud, so here is some suggestion or tips from us, I mean, how to optimize. You know, what we built is a, is a large cloud platform. So there must, uh, you must find a ways to optimize the uh, OpenStack, and you must find a ways to think about your solution before you 
built the cloud platform. Now the first one is a multi-region cloud. So uh, just as I said, just as I said, that uh, we will build the cloud platform on China and on some other parts, Singapore or Dubai and some other parts of the world. So this cloud platform should be managed in a unified way. So for example, data A is a, is a data center on Beijing and the data B is a, is a data center on Singapore and data, C, uh, data center C is on the Dubai. So we need to find a way to you know, manage them together. So what we do is that uh, we will deploy it the OpenStack instance on each data center. And then we will also have a central cloud platform which provides the unified management. So the central cloud platform will also have the OpenStack instance installed. You know, so what's the difference between the central cloud platform and the, the local cloud platform? So the, all, the local cloud platform will only schedule the resource within this data center. But the central cloud platform will provide, you know, the authentication and some other schedule. It means that the central cloud platform can schedule the results from the local cloud platform, but the local cloud platform can also schedule their own resources. And uh, we also find a way to, you know, to extend the network. It means if you, if you have a system, you need to uh, install you need to install your part of your system on this data center, and you also want to find a way to install the other parts on the other data center. So there should be a network connection between these virtual machines. So we use a VXLAN to make all the data centers, you know, to create a logical network across the, the data center across different uh, physical sites. So the next we tips we offered is that to containerize the uh, cloud platform, which means that you can, uh, you can put all your components on the container. So why we suggest the container, containerized cloud platform? So think about this. Uh, if your cloud is the cloud data center you're built now, it's not large enough. But in the near future, if your business uh, increase, you need to put more resources in, I mean, you need to expand your resource. So the cloud platform will become the bottleneck. So you need to find, find a way to expand your cloud platform seamlessly. So the dockerized solution will be the best one I mean, for the expansion, you know, if you put all the uh, uh, components in the Docker, and uh, you can, next time, if you want to expand your resource, you, you just uh, put another, for example, we have a Nova on the host one, and we have Nova on the host two, and Nova on host three, and we will have a HA proxy or some other proxy in front of these components. And the next time, if you need to expand your cloud platform, just add the host zero, uh, just add the host four, and create a new Nova components on the host four, and you know the cloud platform will extend. So besides, uh, you know, the Nova and the Cindy and Neutron, what we are talking about these components is a is a uh, non-active. I mean, if if this service crashed, it crashed there will not be any disruption. But if the database crashed, there are data on it. So you need to build the data in cluster. And the rapid MQ, I mean the message queue in cluster. So we have two ways for the stateless uh, pro, uh, project. We just expand them seamlessly. And for the state project, uh, for, sorry, for the state components such as the database and the uh, the rapid MQ, we need to uh, find, find a way to, to create a cluster. And uh, if one database crashed, you know, the other parts of the, uh, the, the other uh, database will take over. So the next 
typically for the building the large scale cloud platform is uh, uh, you know, how to schedule the compute resource. So think about this, we have a lot of clusters in the data center. And we need to uh, separate these clusters. So what we do is that we create a tech for them. You know, if the customer has, a, let's take an example, 100 clusters, and each cluster has a lot of uh, visualization hosts in it. So we create a tag for different clusters, and uh, we will combine this tag with a flavor. You know, we use flavor to create the virtual machine, I mean, in OpenStack. So we can, we can uh, combine this tag with uh, the OpenStack flavor. So, uh, flavor. So next time when the tenant user wants to create a virtual machine, he just, uh, you know, select uh, the template he prefer and uh, combine with the flavor and the virtual machine will be created on this cluster. For example, we have a flavor one, which named high performance. We have flavor two, which has a name lower performance. And the higher performance was a cluster one, and the lower performance was a class two, uh, cluster two. So when the end user create a virtual machine and he he needs a virtual machine which has a high performance. He just uh, select uh, the flavor one, which you know com com combined with the tag, uh, tag one. So the virtual machine will be created on the cluster one. So it's an easy way to expand your uh, computer resource. And another one is uh, uh, schedule the large storage uh, resource. You know, we have a different uh, visualization platform, and uh, this visualization platform will connect to the house, uh, sorry, to the storage behind. No matter if it's a, it's a FC storage, iSCSI storage, or a file system. So what we do is that we can pre uh, create different type for different type of storage. So the slide, Previous, I mean, this, the, the previous slides we talked is about the, the computer resource, and this slide we talk about is a, is a storage resource. If you want to create a, a block storage, or you, if you want to create a file system for your virtual machine, then you can select the, the type. I mean, the type we, the, the administrator provide for the end user. You know, the, the administrator can. Uh, create a different uh, storage and make a different type for the different storage. And, and they can assign this uh, tag for different uh, tenant user. And the, if the tenant user want to create a uh, block storage, they just select like the tag they need and the, the storage will be created on the backend storage. It may be a virtual disk or a logic line or local drive, it depends. So next, what we're going to talk is about uh, the uh, large scale network. Uh, come on, let's think about this. Uh, so let me ask a question. So for the open source community version, if we want to realize a layer three or layer four network function, how we realize it? So generally, you know, the OpenStack will have a host which is called network node. And uh, if we need a net service, that the OpenStack Neutron will create an IP tables instance on the network node. And if I need a load balancer, maybe the uh, Neutron plugin will create a name, uh, sorry, create a HA pro proxy instance on it. And uh, if I need some other service, we will create the resource on the network node. But generally, the, they have only two network nodes. And it's, uh, if the scale of, of the cloud design is very big, you know, the network node will become the bottleneck, you know, because it has uh, limitations. So what we do here is that we didn't use the network node, but we use a 
physical device and the NF components inside. So if dif different tenant user needs an advanced service, such as a virtual firewall, virtual load balancer, now the results will be created on the uh, security devices or on the virtual machine. So it can be extended easily. It's not only two network nodes. It's whatever you, whatever you need, whatever you, uh, you build. You know, it's uh, very easy to expand. So another thing is that, you know, uh, let's think about this. If the two virtual machines on the same host, if you want to set a security policy, I mean the two virtual machines on the same host connect to the different logical network. And if you want to set a policy between these two network, you must uh, you know, set a firewall policy between these two network. So let's take an example. If the VM1 wants to talk with the VM2, now the traffic should be go out the switch and to the core switch and to the, you know, the security devices. And the, the security, I mean the firewall will, will filter the packet and send it back to the same host. But here what we use is the, is a, the security group. It's a, a virtual NIC. It's an IP table instance between the virtual NIC and the port on the virtual switch. So next, if the two VM want to talk to each other, you know, the traffic don't need to go out to the data center. It, it, it doesn't need to go to the cross switch and to the security device and back to the VM. You know, they can talk together on the same host because the IP tables will take care of this, you know, that we call it a security group. So the security group is mainly used for uh, protect the network traffic within the data center. This we call it west and east traffic. And if, you know, if the, there's a traffic out from the, the, the uh, I mean, from the other data center or from the internet, it should go to the, uh, the uh, security device such as uh, physical, uh, I mean, the uh, firewall first or to the NFV uh, components instead. So we have two different types. One is east or west, and another is north and south. So the last of what I'm going to talk is uh, the optimization for the OpenStack itself. So in general uh, solution, we put all the service on three hosts. But uh, in this cloud platform, we deployed the database and the middleware on the other host. And we put all the data from the database and the middleware to the backend storage with SSD drive. So it will you know, increase the performance a lot. And also we added the, uh, the MAM cache between the Keystone uh, database and the, the Keystone client. You know, each time the Keystone, if you, for example, if you want to create a virtual machine, the Keystone, the NOAA client, and the Cinder client and Neutron client should get a token from the Keystone. And the Keystone will retrieve the data from the backend storage. So the backend storage will be, become the bottleneck. So we should find a good way that we set a MAM cache between the Keystone and the backend database. And we also set a MAM cache between the Keystone and the Keystone client. So if the Keystone needs a token, it just uh, you know, retrieves the data from the, the memory. So it increases the uh, performance a lot. So since the time is limited, and that's what my talk today, and if you have any questions, just ask, please. Thank you.